Okay, we are going to talk about uh, Chapter 40, Principles of Animal Form and Function. We're going to be looking at feedback control, homeostasis, energy metabolism, and most importantly for this one, thermal regulation. Now, diffusion is very important for this. It's basically, we need things to diffuse in our organism and diffuse out of the organism. Here's a typical single-celled organism. Here is a typical multi-celled organism, and you get an idea of how this diffusion occurs, and we will talk about that a little bit more. It's very important that, again, animals have um, internal areas where this exchange does occur. And so our respiratory system, our circulatory system, our metabolic waste systems all serve to increase the surface area that is exposed to an environment in order to uh, facilitate exchange of materials. And we will talk about each of these as they come. But basically, we are going to talk about homeostasis, which is basically the body's ability to maintain internal conditions, both temperature, chemical, etc. Mainly, we're going to be looking at thermal regulation. Um, how this is done by a process that we call a negative feedback loop. In this negative feedback loop, what happens is that you have a stimulus that results in a response that negates that stimulus. So in here, if uh, we are getting too hot, the heater is turned off and that response is actually going to cause the room to cool down, the opposite of getting hot. And kind of the opposite happens when a room gets too cold, the heater is turned on, which forms a response that, that uh, negates that, that particular stimulus. So again, things are turned on and then the response causes it to be turned off. So it's critical that you know how a negative feedback loop. All living things require energy. And uh, in this case here, we're looking at endotherms of various sizes from a human being, a uh, 60 kilogram uh, female, to a four kilogram uh, penguin, to a four kilogram uh, king snake. If you notice the ectotherm, the king snake, even though it's the same size as a penguin, requires a lot less energy. Again, on this listing here, we are looking at uh, basically our basal metabolism, what that organism does, how much energy it spends on reproduction, thermal regulation, et cetera. And if we look at all of these guys here, that these guys, uh, us endotherms, spend a lot of energy, um, basically thermal regulation, and ectotherm spends basically none at all. Okay. Keep on going. All right. Uh, again, energy, almost all the energy that we use ends up in heat. And so, again, the energy that we get from foodstuffs is, um, uh, is converted into heat, and that is either um, uh, lost uh, through a number of different things. And so, um, again, it's critical to know this particular slide. Uh, the thermal regulators so would take something like the river otter, depending on what the ambient environmental temperature is, the temperature of inside of a river otter is always the same. It's, that is a classic uh, endotherm. Uh, ectotherm, like a large mouth bass, that its internal body temperature um, varies with the environment that it's in. And now what we will see here is, again, both of these organisms will die of hypothermia if it gets too um, um, cold or hyperthermia if it gets too hot. However, the endotherm has some activities that can do in order to um, uh, maintain its internal conditions. Endotherms include reptiles like this lizard here. Endotherms include things like the mouse or birds. Again, there's various advantages and disadvantages to being both of these. However, endotherms can regulate their temperature by using environmental conditions. That is, they can go, if, they are, if they're cold, they can to go to where it's warm and heat up. If they're too hot, they can go to where it's cooler and cool down. So uh, again, the homeotherms, sorry, uh, heterotherms are endotherms that can sometimes control their um, uh, temperature using metabolism. And again, this will occur, occur at certain times. And this fat-tailed mouse opossum will regulate throughout the day um, sometimes when it's inactive, we'll let it go. Uh, under certain conditions, uh, they'll regulate. Sometimes they won't, sweating and panting, etc. And then uh, in hibernation, an example of 
basically where the temperature goes down real low and you conserve the amount of um, energy that you're expending, but it's not totally zero. So be aware of these. Um, bigger organisms use more energy. However, per gram we see they use less energy. Okay, so overall, and be aware of these two uh, grams. That is a one gram mouse tissue requires more energy than one gram of human tissue. And again, that is because the mouse is much smaller than us and they lose heat a lot more. They have a higher um, heart rate, they have a higher breathing rate. This is a very important picture here. It's looking at what it's big and what's small. Uh, small, again, requires relatively less food. So a mouse doesn't need to get as much food as an elephant in order to live. They have a higher metabolic rate per gram. They have a very high breathing rate, very high uh, heart rate. Um, that's a negative uh, for them. Again, they have to find a higher proportion of their body mass in food in order to do that. Their breathing rate, their metabolic rate is very high. Larger animals have a lower metabolic rate per gram and lower breathing and heart rate. Uh, again, they, a minus to them is they have to find relatively more food and they need more structural report. You are bigger, so you need bigger, stronger legs in order to hold you up and to move you around. Another problem with uh, small size is a shorter life. Animals that are smaller tend to not live as long. Again, this is the homeotherms or the endotherms. Things that are a little bit longer, it takes a lot longer to get that material. So you're going to live longer in order to uh, have more. And again, I'm not going to get into um, why this, why we think that is. Again, be aware of how uh, we control our temperature and what is responsible for that. This is the homeostasis. This is the maintaining our internal um, conditioner. Uh, the hypothalamus is very important in this. Be aware. Uh, again, we can set... Uh, this point a little bit higher in order to get a fever. A fever will result in an increase in body temperature and helps us um, uh, fight off certain infections as well. Uh, again, be aware of the graphs. We talked about this. Uh, this last one here, uh, this I think is very important. Endothermia is found both in birds and mammals. Since birds and mammals both share this character, they must form a monophyletic group. Um, Again, this is one of those cases where you may have one thing that's similar, but many, many other things that are different. They are definitely not a monophyletic group, although they do share that in common. Um, I do want you to go through and look at various things. Um, again, how are sea otters able to live in um, uh, cold water? And some of that is due to their um, mental insulation. Um, uh, again, insects. Uh, we look at their uh, metabolism um, and their behavior, non-shipping, warming, brown fat. Uh, uh, is, uh, that can be burnt. We tend to see it a lot more in babies. And again, organisms that are hibernating tend to have a little bit more brown fat. Uh, again, be aware. There's a number of uh, adaptations that have helped us uh, a loss and gain of heat. Uh, it's insulation, circulatory adaptations, cooling by evaporative heat loss, behavioral response of adjusting metabolic heat production, be aware of this, uh, be aware of what skin looks like. Strictly adaptation is the counter current exchange. You should be aware of how that happens. Many organisms use counter current exchange. Again, an organism like an elephant can't necessarily um, sweat, but they um, can use evaporative cooling in order to cool themselves down a little bit. Behavioral responses, again, the dragonflies, the obese posture, minimizes their exposure to sun and minimizes how they warm up. Again, some uh, organisms can um, use uh, 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 various movement in order to warm themselves up with a little counter current exchange. But again, even some of your ectotherms can act as an endotherm for a little bit. And again, this is by looking at something like a snake um, that uses muscle contraction. Um, these are all organisms that look similar to one another. Know the differences between those. Um, again, tissues, know the differences between epithelial connective muscle tissue um, and nervous tissue. And uh, these are the different organ systems that, are, um, that we see in animals. And you want to know what those organ systems are and, and mainly what they do. That is it for um, uh, looking at animal function.